Sister Ashley. This cards again I will be set up out here. The scouts are selling camp cards again and we'll be set up right out here. Me, me and Matthew and I Matthew and I. And uh, they're five dollars each and it's to help a scout go to camp. And also if you look in your bulletin, we have a uh, solid rock uh, information about our spaghetti dinner the, that the Solid Rock people are ho holding so that we can afford for a couple people to go to Spectacular this year. So if you'll look at that. Thank you, Ashley. Beth? Good morning. Uh, the Women's Department. Uh, is going to sponsor Wilmer Hall again this year. We've done it a couple of times in the past and the kids just really love it. Uh, we try to give them beach towels and stuff to go to the beach because the uh, Wilmer Hall Foundation people take them to the beach several times during the summer and they just love it. So the Women's Department this year has decided to do beach towels again and uh, I'm asking the congregation if y'all would please help us in this endeavor. There's 32 children who will be eligible to go. Uh, the beach towels, you can usually find them like at Walmart or somewhere for six or seven dollars. And if you would, please, I'm just asking y'all to help us gather these beach towels. And if you don't wanna go get them, if you just wanna give me money, I'll go get them or whatever. But. Uh, the kids really do appreciate this, and I think it is a good outreach for our congregation. Thank you. Oh, we need to have them by uh, the middle of May because the school is out the last of May. Thank you. Larry, you, are, you okay? Okay. Well, good morning to each and every one of you. Uh, let me uh, first say I appreciate your prayers, your concerns, uh, your cards. Um, we went in, to, as most of you know, for a little surgery this past week, and uh, everything worked out good, and uh, we're back. Uh, maybe not quite 100%, but pretty close, uh, so we're just glad to be with you and, and share with you. We want to call your attention to uh, uh, your announcement program there, if you would just take a quick look at that, and Tim, just inform you, see uh, one of the announcements that we have there starting on March and it says what the 15th I think it's going to actually be the 22nd March the 22nd to make that change the adult Sun school class would change Al Lewis Starr would teach a class on dealing with life challenge and life tragedy using a video series based on the 23rd Psalm so we encourage all you adults to be part of that and come and share with uh, with Al in that Sunday school class. Also, you see below that. Also, starting on there will be a Sunday school class for the for the youth, senior high age. So be aware of that. And we uh, that'll be starting up here. And of course, you know, for the last couple of weeks, we've announced about our youth church. <coughs> excuse me, a youth church that it will be held the second and the fourth Sunday in every. Uh, every month and it's going to be in the ladies parlor and it's ages 6 through 12 and we invite all of the youth as part of you whether it's your grandchildren or your children uh, your neighbor's children whoever they are if we can invite them and come up here and share in that youth church uh, every other Sunday and we'll try to keep you up to date which of that's the second and the fourth Sunday in each month we do want to call your attention to important dates also. We shared with you last week, and starting this coming Thursday at 6 p.m. will be our first choir practice of the year. We invite all singers to be here. We're looking forward to the Easter season and the use of our choir during that season, so it's necessary that we start to practice. So please, all of those that can, be here Thursday night, 6 p.m., Gail. What if it's 31? Is that all right? Okay. All right, we'll try to, uh, I'm going to assist Gail. We're going to call you, let you know. I'm going to take care of the men folks. Uh, um, I guess I'll, my first call will be to the weatherman, and then the next call will be to whoever. 
So, um, you don't think we can sing when it's cold? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, a sicker. <laughs> All right, be aware of that. Watch your weather, and hopefully we'll be able to be here Thursday night, 6 o'clock. Uh, put on there left, you, you get ready to change your clocks. Daylight saving time will be March the 8th. You know when that is? Next Sunday. Next Sunday, March the 8th. Listen, I have uh, misplaced some paperwork that was given to me. It was folded in half. It was probably with a program. It's very important. If you do see that, it's kind of aged, aged yellow. It is folded in half. If you see it, would you please get back with me on that because it doesn't belong to me and the person that entrusted me with it uh, entrusted me because I was supposed to be able to take care of it. Thank you. Uh, just Jerry just uh, shared with me, all you good men that are part of the uh, men's course or would like to be part of a men's course, we will be singing next Sunday. Um, yours truly here will be speaking, and so you're going to be my warm-up act. So we're looking for our men's course. If you will remain after church here for just a second, uh, we're going to talk about what we're going to sing and get you together, and, and hopefully we'll all be here next Sunday. Also, if you see there on your important dates, on March the 19th, 20th, and 22nd, that's a Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, uh, having a preaching little preaching series, Wake Inabed will be our guest minister. He has uh, shared with me that he has a great testimony and experience. He's out in Las Vegas right now, and he's had uh, uh, some encounters with some Native Americans out there concerning uh, the church and um, our, their, the Native Americans' involvement in the church, and he's bringing that with him, and that would probably be one of the focuses of his message uh, on the 19th. So please be aware of these dates. Mark them down. Share them with your family, your friends, or the church members. Be here and let's have a tremendous, and I mean that sincerely, tremendous turnout for Wake as we share together on the 19th and the 20th and the 22nd. Also, you see the Palm Sunday and the Rosé reunions there. Be aware of uh, those dates there, please. And... Uh, I'm sorry, 6.30, yes. Um, thank you, David. Uh, six, the service will start at 6.30. Uh, I'm going to be picking on a couple of you uh, priesthood members to be presiders that week. So just be waiting. I'll be giving you a call. And I think that completes uh, my announcement section. Uh, we do want to share with you about a birthday that we have here. Sonny, I know you don't have a birthday, I know. I can, uh, yeah, about yours, the one that's at your, oh, oh, I looked on, our, there was a book, there was a, an announcement I was show, shared that some of you may have it, I don't have it for whatever reason, um, that the Book of Mormon class that's at Sonny and Jean's house has been discontinued for the summer, well, that was just mistakenly picked up, it was an old announcement, it has not changed, it is every th uh, fourth Thursday, second and fourth Thursday, at 6.30 at the home of Sonny and Jean Goff. Sonny. Thank you, Sonny. We have one birthday among us here this morning uh, that, I, that I'm aware of, and if, if there's more, please tell me. But uh, looking through our directory, 
I see that um, here within just a few days here, Sister Lois Rose will be celebrating her birthday. And so we're so glad to have her with us this morning and to wish her a happy birthday. And if you would join me in singing, Lois is here with us this morning, singing happy birthday to this sweet sister. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lois. Happy birthday to you. Thank you for all being here this morning. We have a tremendous good turnout. This is just the start of a lot of good things that we're going to do. Thank you so very much. And again, thank you for your prayers and your concerns in seeing me through this uh, little setback we had this week. Thank you. I want to welcome you to our service this morning. We do have a, a few uh, administrative items to take care of, and I wanted to take care of those now. Uh, appreciate the prelude and Shannon's beginning of our Lenten candle lir uh, liturgy, and uh, she will continue that part of it after we uh, take care of business here. Wanted to uh, point out a few things a little unique to our service. First of all, hymn number 270 in the Community of Christ Sings book. Uh, let's pull that out. Uh, this is unfamiliar to me, though I have it on good authority from Sheila that it shouldn't be too, too hard of a melody to pick up, but I thought we'd run through it one time before we got into the service proper, if you would. Uh, but before we, so, You've got 270. We'll just sing the first stanza. If we're, if we're all good, then we'll, we'll stop. If we need more practice, we'll do it again. Uh, secondly, during the part of the service entitled Sacrament of the Lord's Supper, we will be using hymn number 533 in Community of Christ Sings. And we will sing it just stanzas at a time. We'll sing the first two stanzas at, at first, as is printed in the bulletin. Then I will make a short invitation regarding the communion sacrament. Uh, then as the third stanza is played and as we sing it, the emblems will be prepared. Uh, then uh, after the emblems are prepared, I will invite us to kneel as is our custom and we will have the serving of the bread and wine. After that is completed, we will sing the fourth stanza. So we won't sing the fourth stanza until after the the communion is completed uh, and we will sing the fourth stanza then upon which we'll have a moment of silent reflection 
and we will begin with the fifth stanza and final stanza after that. Sheila will play the whole song through the, before the very first time we sing it. But then each successive time, we will, she'll just play the last line. And then we will begin singing that stanza. All right, hymn 270. Let's do a little work on that. Sheila, if you play it all the way through, and then we will practice. Thank you. I think we all did very well, and we will uh, take that as our practice. Shannon, please continue. We are God's people. We trust in God's promises. Yet in our humanness, we still experience times when we question God, when our faith is shaken, when we feel abandoned and alone. But God is always with us, even when we are paying attention to our own fears instead of listening for God. We extinguish this candle to acknowledge the darkness we experience when we allow our fear and doubt to turn us away from our faith in God. Will you pray with me from your bulletins? God of steadfast love, we bring our wandering souls to you. Empty our hearts of fear and insecurity and fill us with your unfailing grace as we journey through this season of Lent, trusting that you are with us always. Amen. And let us continue in our united affirmations together through the use of the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. You who seek the Lord, praise the Lord. All you offspring of Jacob, honor the Lord. All you offspring of Israel, revere the Lord. For the Lord has not despised or abhorred the suffering of the afflicted. The Lord has not hidden his face from us, the Lord has listened to our cries for help. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will sing praises forever. stand. Oh. 
most gracious God, I come to you at this time asking that you be with us during this service. We invite your spirit to be with us and we open our hearts to your love, your spirit, and your giving. Help us, God, to become the people that we have been taught to become representatives of you. Help us, God, to reach out to those around us and show them what your son showed us as the life you would like for us to live. God, once again, I ask on behalf of all people in this room that you be with us, that you be with the speaker, and that you be with each and every one for their own individual needs. This, God, I ask in your son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We have committed to take upon ourselves the name of Christ, who is the embodiment of God's shalom. This is our blessing, but it is also our calling. We are called to be a prophetic community, to be a people of God's peace. But it's not enough to just be people of peace. We are called to live as people of peace. How can we more fully embody Christ's peace in our daily lives? Dear God, we have heard you calling us, and we commit ourselves anew to live as people, your people of peace. Grant us the courage to deepen our devotion to you, to act with compassion, and to speak out for justice. May our words, our actions, and our lives truly reflect and embody the peace of Christ. This is our prayer. Amen. I asked Tim, <coughs> you'll have to forgive me, my sinuses, I get a water bill once a month for these. I asked Tim to, he said a prayer when we come out, I said include the, that pain in my hip. It's gone. That man deserves a raise, folks. <laughs> I've heard a lot of prayers before, but I, I said, say one from the hip, and lo and behold, he did. So, anyway, it's on the way out. It feels better. Our focus is communion, not the sermon. And that's what I really hope today that we realize maybe more than ever before. Our thoughts will be brief. It is our time to commune with communion and not a time for a sermon. My scripture thought is as follows from John's first chapter, verses 28, 29, and part of 31. For he shall baptize not only with water, but with fire and with the Holy Ghost. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, excuse me, <coughs> behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. And he was baptized of John. I don't know about you, but I got to imagine what John must have really felt like and hoping one day we can hear his testimony as if to say, oh my goodness, look at here, what I've got to do. 
and he did it. God gave us in the 17th section of Doctrine and Covenants two prayers, the only ones I know of in the church that he asked us to use literally each word. I've selected key parts of it for consideration for the purpose of our communion. O oh God, the Eternal Father, the operative word there, may I suggest, is eternal. Name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, could there be any other? Bless and sanctify this bread, the souls of all those who partake of it, which we do willingly. Eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son. Witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, there is a requirement. Willing to take upon him the name of thy Son. Always remember him. I think we covered this in our Sunday school class this morning. And to keep his commandments. We keep his commandments, his hands are bound. If we do not keep them, then there's no promise. The wine is similar to that of the bread. O God, the Eternal Father, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, bless and sanctify this wine. Remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them. Witness, all witness, do always remember him that they may have his spirit to be with them. Back in my younger working days at the office, I remember reaching into a foul jacket, and a friend of mine, he told me, he said, be careful, these foul folders are like razor blades. And I forgot, and I reached in there one day with a hand and cut a sizable place in my finger, and I did bleed. And for some reason, it caused me to think about the spilled blood. When we follow Jesus the best we can, the shadows of life disappear. And I found this in preparation for today that I find very fitting. It talks about shadows of life. The pathway may look dark and gloomy. The shadows may hide the beauty and give the impression that there is no safety or security ahead. But faith causes us to know that the way is safe, secure, and beautiful. When you pass through, a new day will banish the shadows, and you will see face to face the reality which lies before. A second thing to remember is that shadows themselves have no reality. There is nothing to fear or dread in a shadow. It may hide reality, but the shadow is not real. It does not change anything. Whenever there is a shadow, we have positive proof there is light shining beyond. There can be no shadow without light. The shadow is nothing but gloom caused by something between you and the light. When the shadows vanish, when you face the light, when we walk forward together and, and, and face things, we never see a shadow. It is only when we turn our backs that shadows could possibly become a problem. When you turn to look where you have been and relive the past, the shadows deepen and the gloom of death increases. Turn and look into the life ahead. The light of the eternal shines in your face. And the shadows are no more. Finally, the shadows that seem to be dreadful and fearful really bring out the glory and the beauty of life. You can say a thousand other things, but that's not the purpose. Our purpose is communion. And I hope that I've been able to help direct that focus in some way to what we're here for today. It's not a limited sermon, a few minutes, but we're here to do something that the big guy told us to do in the name of the living Christ. I believe that we would do that.
more fully accept and embody your oneness and equality in Jesus Christ who dwells in oneness with God. Oneness and equality in Christ are realized through the waters of baptism, confirmed by the Holy Spirit, and sustained through the sacrament of communion. Embrace the full meaning of these sacraments and be spiritually joined in Christ as never before. However, be aware, it is not right to profess oneness and equality with Christ through sacramental covenants and then deny that equality by attitude, word, or action. Such behavior wounds Christ's body and denies what is eternally resolved in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. O oh God, we confess, we speak and sing of oneness, but sometimes our attitudes, our words, and our actions divide us from each other and from you. When we turn away from each other in anger and judgment, when we fail to welcome all persons to the table of the Lord, we wound Christ's body. Forgive us, God. Help us to celebrate and embody our oneness and equality in Jesus Christ as we gather together at your table where all are welcome and all are one. Amen. First two stanzas only of hymn Odd, perhaps, that the sacrament by which we are called to remember Christ is one that calls us to remember him in his apparently most weakened condition. Broken, bleeding, about to expire, perhaps already expired. Disciples running this way and that to scurry away from authorities and from perceived threats. And yet this is perhaps what makes us all equal, that in fact we, however wonderful we are, and we are each wonderful, we each can say we have need of this broken Christ. We each can confess this through our kneeling and through our partaking. We are invited to the table. We are invited on the principle or under the agreement that we come not because we have proven ourselves to the Lord Jesus, but because we have confessed our need, constant need, complete need, thorough need of this one who presents himself absolutely broken to us. Let us partake 
realizing we are so invited, realizing we are so equal with one another here and throughout all places and all times, needing this sacrament and needing this sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. And as much as you are able, please kneel.
Once again, shall we kneel? Again, let us take the opportunity to kneel.
hope everyone reads the back of your bulletin every day. I sure do. Uh, you can't ask for a better Southwest General response than on the back of it today. So please read with me if I read Matthew 25, verse 34 through 40. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come to you that are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. I'm so proud of my local church family for feeding the local least members of our community. The food pantry, the third Saturday of each month, is our way of doing Christ's work here on earth. This is our very tangible effect of your generous response. Would ushers come forward? Lord, we ask that you bless these offerings we are about to receive. We ask that you guide and bless the ones responsible for seeing that these funds are put to the best use to help those that need it the most. In the name of your glorious Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Just a reminder, prior to the singing of our closing hymn, there will be a uh, quiet meditative piano response after the sending forth uh, for our, our time for further reflection, and then we'll have the recessional after that.
If you truly would be community of Christ, then embody and live the concerns and passion of Christ. The challenges and opportunities are momentous. Will you remain hesitant in the shadows of your fears, insecurities, and competing loyalties? Or will you move forward in the light of your divinely instilled call and vision? The mission of Jesus Christ is what matters most for the journey ahead.